pancreatic cases, all pediatric cases, all repeat ERCPs, they are all done under uh, propofol. Okay. Uh, so all difficult, difficult when I say meaning, you know, uh, mainly pancreas divisum, pancreatitis, etc. Young females, I prefer that they, uh, they are done under propofol. But repeats, I'll never do without uh, MAC or general, whatever the anesthetist says. Now, like yours, uh, or we have anesthetists here uh, on the three days that I come here. And uh, we have anesthetic, uh, anesthetic backup. And I will use it if I need in patients where I need. Otherwise, we'll just do standard. Um, standard stone, et cetera, we just go ahead and do it under sedation. It saves time, and obviously, it's also cost effective. So <coughs> if you're using conscious sedation, then you have to be careful. All of you have attended the course. It's very important not to give extra sedation. It's very important to have resuscitation. Trust me, despite of having anesthetists and everything else and doing a lot of cases in this unit, sometimes, occasionally, I would just ask them, where is that, m you know, one of the anesthetists will ask for something, and then you suddenly realize that thing is in the next room. And that should not happen. And uh, we now tell the anesthetists that it is your responsibility to ensure whatever you need is in the unit, in, in that room. It's not our responsibility. We don't know what you need. So it's their department. And like, you know, we don't have an anesthesia department directly involved here. They're just doing us a favor. So it becomes difficult. So that's important if you're using um, um, uh, conscious sedation, make sure that you have uh, flumazenil available or NX8 um, to reverse in case. Um, anybody over 60 in Pakistan, um, I'm careful, we'll go 2-2. Two, two. So we use midazolam 2 milligrams and Kins 2 milligrams. That's what we'll start with. And most of the cases are done very easily with that. Done properly, if you intubate properly and easily, patients are usually OK. I don't know why, but ERCP patients are much more calm than a gastroscopy. Propofol should, in, in, in our unit, is done by anesthetist, so we don't, uh, we don't get involved. There, I know there are centers in Pakistan who just give propofol like this. I've been told it's very simple. Why do you get the anesthetist? You can just put it in. And I've seen patients with anesthetists actually go down, and uh, I, I'm too scared. I have enough complications on, on, uh, with my procedures. I'm really not interested in having more complications from anesthesia, especially on my account. So this is what we do, uh, sedation. Now, what positions do you normally have your patient on when you're doing ERCP, doctor? Prone, prone, prone. Completely prone? OK. Completely prone uh, with, with that. OK. And all of you? OK. Okay. What's the advantage of that? When you have a flabby abdomen, you have to push it in the That's one of the times you do. Kachab, do you have them on? Slightly. slightly. The same with you? But it's kind of a semi-prone <laughs> position, which is what we always <laughs> did. And then, you know, you had that. And if you wanted to prone, you all you need yeah, to do is just straighten right, the right, legs and right. patient goes flat. Yeah. I used to do the same thing, and we all did that. Uh, I think in the, in the earlier part of our uh, work, now our patients here are prone. OK, the left lateral, yeah, our left lateral I keep. Uh, patients, like you said, huge, big, anesthetist says, you know, can you do it left lateral? And said, no problem. And the other one that I have learned with time is the LDLT, liver, liver, uh, living donor liver transplant patients. Um, we need sometimes to have them on left lateral. It makes it easier for us to pass the pylorus where we are stuck. So I tell them, you know, keep him on the left lateral. Let me pass the pylorus, and then you can make him prone gives us a little bit of a chance to, to use the gastric pressure, something that we've learned with over years. So position, uh, sorry, but pregnant lady, we, uh, uh, that's something that, that the anesthetist has to decide, obviously, depending on how pregnant she is. If it's seven, eight months, uh, you know, obviously, it's better to have them on the left lateral. It doesn't add anything in terms of our procedure. I don't think it makes it uh, much more difficult, but fluoroscopy changes with left lateral position, so you need to be wary of that. If I need to see the bile duct,
Please, so sir, he knows he will just enter. If you want to do, um, if you want to look at the biliary tree, then left lateral would not allow you to have good use of the intrahepatic system. So you need to be wary of that. System is looking. So if it's difficult, I need to have views, then I would like them either uh, supine or prone. Preferably, if you want to really see uh, the, the intrahepatic ducts, you want to go further up, or you're having difficulty, then supine is better. You want to add anything? Yeah, you can change the incline of the so, so that's a big advantage of having a radiographer. We don't. Uh, Okay, so position is done. Now you have the scope, you check systems like we've gone through this, everybody has gone through the course, so it's important that your elevator is working, your right left, uh, your big wheel up and down is working. Um, right left uh, utilization is very limited, but sometimes you, I mean, you know, when you're actually trying to cannulate, it helps. And we'll discuss that as we go into cannulation. Um, Intubation, as I said, can be blind or can be visual, okay? Once you go down and you're in the stomach, what is important is that, and there are different ways of doing it, I usually go anti-clock, move as soon as I've got into the stomach, go anti-clock, and all you need to do is just let it go clock, and you should be looking at, uh, with the big wheel up, you should be looking at the uh, pylorus. You want the pylorus at 6 o'clock position ideally, and just move forward and you should be in the duodenum. Okay? Once you're in the duodenum, uh, again, it, quite often all you need to do is just clock is talk and a little bit of pullback. You can actually use the small wheels depending on how, how the configuration of the small ball is. Sometimes you have to, sometimes you don't. In an early stage, it's important you lock the small wheel, big wheel back and rotate clockwise and pull back and you will see the pylorus literally, um, ampulla literally in front of you. We'll go through these techniques more hands-on. Most important thing in ERCP is positioning of the ampulla. There is no point trying to cannulate if your ampulla is not rightly positioned. And trust me, 90, I don't know, I can't give a percentage, but 95, 9 plus percentage failures are because you've not been able to. You're trying to cannulate from. Chala jayega, yar. I mean, you know, you can see it. Try karo. Pas to rahe na, thoda aur thoda. That doesn't work. So you work very hard on your positioning. Can't get it on the on the standard position. Go long loop position and try and bring the ampulla close to you. Is there a standard? The closer it is, I mean, as, as close as possible when you can see it. Obviously, it's too close, you can't see it, but it's, it should be close enough for you to, lift, to see A, obviously, so you don't want it too close, but it should not be far enough that your cannula, when it comes out, it has a little bend. It should not. Your cannula, when it comes out, should be straight. Your tip should, you know, it shouldn't be like this. Because the moment you go this, you can do it yourself if you want to aim towards the roof. But it should not be like, if you do distance, from the distance, it's actually turning. And I think that's very important. And, and that position is also important because you have, as we will discuss, how do you position? You have two options. You can either put something into the ampulla or bring it close to you. If you don't have the right positions, you lose that one. And to me, and I'm sure to both of them, it's very, the, the
bringing of ampulla close to you is very important. More than often, it's just that which does cannulation for us. Okay, so scope को दाल दिखाओ यार साफ सुथरा है ना no problem छोड़ो यार so this is cannulation under vision right so you can actually see the pharynx here and you go into the so that's one way of going you can come out and if you go and think that you have um, you know um, apna you're putting an ng tube you can literally go blindly and and try and and just negotiate and you should be able to achieve the same thing once you have done this um, then it so what i was trying to we, are, we see we are almost reaching the stomach and so when we go no this is what i was saying this is bloody difficult so once you are in the stomach i think this is something which is important and you what happens is quite often you've seen people keep going and then you turn back and you're actually you've got a big loop and you start seeing the patient one of the reasons why conscious sedation may problem with is because you've gone to the stomach you're in that rush or you don't understand you keep going and you've created a big stretch in the stomach the moment that stretch occurs patient starts comfortable patient bade aaram se interval se wo chalna pujna the reason is not because the patient is intolerant the patient it's our fault so it's uh, one of the ways to do it is you just go anti clock in your head and when you go anti clock theek hai and this is actually we'll show you better in the thing but i'm sure it may be ho jana chahiye and after the anti clock you turn see even in this we've now got big wheel up and we'll keep moving in and we should see the pylorus there theek hai so what we've done is we came here and we've actually done anti clock so anti clock actually goes and when you actually do clockwise what happens is you literally have yourself in the antrum so a little bit of big wheel you should be able to see the pylorus and we have that's not bad i'm not doing that bad usually takes half an hour to do this but this is very stiff so the idea is ye to hum aapko sirf hum aapko sirf principal iska dikha rahe hain but we wanted the good thing about this is once we've got the pylorus then we'll be able to hopefully show you uh, uh, so even in this uh, minimum you don't want to take too much air because the more you expand the stomach a you'll make him uncomfortable and b um, you you stretch the stomach so you're only going to uh, make it difficult for yourself so minimum or or sensible air here the loop function the stomach uh, after intubation is it only the wider it or uh loop formation in the stomach 95 cases are because of your fault 95% times you should be successful 5100 maybe you know you have a difficult stomach you have difficult anatomy um kuch ha kuch tarah ki koi cheez hai that's a different thing but so once you're here uh, you are in the duodenum then what you can do is you can lock if you want to i don't usually lock my lock and then do a clockwise rotation and even in this dummy we are we should be able to see the ampulla okay so once you've seen the ampulla yeah <laughs> okay so we have got that position all right to me if you can not because i have done it but we've all done this so if you can do this you're probably okay in doing ERCP okay so that's uh, somebody asked me how far you need to have i still feel that's a little far for me and it's looking a little bit down so but in in the real sense it should be okay i have that thing now so what we've done is we've intubated intubated you're all doing endoscopies it should not be a problem for you uh, and you're already done ercps so i said just be gentle one 
caution. You're trying to intubate and you're not going in. Stop. Take the gastroscope out, put it and see if there's a stricture. Once in a while you'll be caught. And there is nothing worse than perforating because you did not see it. No matter how senior, how experienced you are, you are having difficulty passing this scope through the upper airway, stop. Only takes two minutes, ask them to put a gastroscope, have a look, then put it back. And if there's a stricture, dilate it and go back. Okay? Because it will be a shame. Nobody will find out. You can, I mean, just like Dr. Sahib, here, we don't have an issue about uh, so much about litigation, although it's, it's um, you know, it's, it's, it's tough. Well, it's, it's, people have started realizing more, but still, it's just not in us, to be honest, as a society. I don't think it will be, it'll ever be like the West, but at least it should be there enough for us to be careful. And I think that's probably there. So, important, can't go through endoscope, do whatever you have to. Still can't go through, not sure, don't. But don't, for God's sake, perforate. You're down in the stomach. Once you go into the stomach, anti-clock, and clock, big wheel up, you should in most cases have pylorus. If you do, fine. You're stuck, which you will occasionally be, we all do. Then you have to find whatever you have to do. I can't, I mean, you know, you can't create those scenarios. Position, ampulla, you get into the duodenum, lock the right, right back, clockwise rotation, and back. Please don't start pediatric cases, my advice, okay? Uh, because it's, it's not fair, not at least when you, until you're totally comfortable with adults. Please don't. And the second thing is, if you're going to be doing it, be very gentle. It's not about, you don't have to, there is no time race. When you do ERCP, don't do it quickly. Especially in, you know, in your first 500 cases or maybe first 1,000 cases, just give yourself time. So don't do that. There are perforations that have occurred in the duodenum because of that. So you have to be gentle. Most of the time, you can actually see what you're doing. So what I'm trying to explain to you is much easier in the human than there is, okay? Once you've got your position, what do you do? What are the options we have of bringing ampulla close to us? Big wheel down. Big wheel down, it comes close to us. Good. And that takes us, takes us away. Both are important, okay, right? Suction, okay, but suction doesn't help you that much. Pulling of the scope. So shorten the scope. It might not work here, but we'll show you in the, hum even here, you can see just pulling back, you know. Um, so that's two. Uh, what else? Okay. <coughs> Quite often this happens, ke, Dr. Vakar is teaching you. He says, all set. You're having difficulty, here you are, leave it. See what has happened. And now you, what you do is, you don't see what has happened, you will immediately start. Um, now whatever, what was not a very difficult thing, all that happened was this. So all you needed to do was this. So this position is so important. So you, you need to understand what is the scope doing to your ampulla. Okay? So this is what happens regularly when you're training. Yaar, achcha khasa diya tha, sala pata nahi kahan chala gaya. Ham wo chale gaye, do minute ek kam karne, wapas aaye to isko bhi pura kuma. So that's important. And this position, this is important in human when we do when we do that. Like you said, one of the ways that I, um, when we talk about stenting, um, they have no issues. Uh, their scopes are replaced regularly and if it they bre break the elevator it's not a big deal you know they will have another new scope or a replacement we have a big problem you know a lot of centers here only have one or two scopes and so 
I don't use elevator for putting stents as much as I can avoid. I use this, this, or this. This also works. Okay, and with the combination of the three, in difficult cases, sometimes you have to apply all three. It's important to know how do you bring ampulla close to you. So, like you said, big big wheel, pulling back, and this. When you're stuck with difficult stenting and you're not getting through, all three have to be applied at the same time and you can do that. So big wheel is bringing this here, you're pulling back at the same time and you're going this way. Okay. So um, now let me position this nicely and who wants to be the first one? I, I mean I can allow you to go in as well but I think Usme um, time zada lagega and uh, it's not it's not so so easy at as it so how much it's helpful after positioning the ampulla locking the big wheel okay um it makes the metal variability very difficult there okay. it can do it in a certain cases which you can't maintain a stable position but if you lock that 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 maintains you at more of a variability and the important thing is that you can not be in your variability like in your dream this was a some people would use the gas Would 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 you have a different view? I mean, sometimes it helps. I, I think it depends on the situation. But, uh, I so, but training kit, I, I find yeah. if they they use the kind of stuff. Uh, but in their growth, it, it usually you line it up for them, lock it, and put the wheel outside. But that may be uh, that. See, early days may. What he's talking about uh, is obviously uh, now it's irritating not to be able to use the big wheel. So if it's not like this, it kind of our habit is such that we'll say, "What's wrong?" You know, if you gave me this, immediately you would say, "What is this? Yeah, why have you locked it?" So that comes with experience, and obviously maneuverability is important. And he does difficult cases, so that's also important. But in your early days, there is no harm if you lock it. Okay. Partially, how do you partially lock? It's a lock, lock, or not, or it's in between. So once, <coughs> now what you need to do is when you go back even here and when you go back to you, see what is happening. What are you doing to change the position? What happens when you go here? What happens when you go anti clock? What happens when you go in? What happens when you come out? You have a boss standing, so if you have a boss standing, वो आएगा वो ठीक कर देगा एक मिनट में कोई बड़ी बात नहीं लेकिन आपको कम से कम ये तो समझ में आ जाएगा कि यार मेरे इन इन चीजों से ये हो रहा है। So when I'm going clockwise, the ampulla is going away from me on the left side. When I'm going anti-clockwise, ampulla is coming, you know, to the right of the screen. And that's that's what you need to. So once it becomes part of the way you do it, then you are not bothered. The moment you give me the scope, I know what is happening. So I'll just do a couple of maneuvers, and we are back to the thing. And you think, oh, we are very good. It's just simple. Okay. Lock, I personally, uh, like Vakar said, totally agreed with him, but early days, mein, if you are uncomfortable, lock it, there is no harm. But please make sure that the locks are released before you pull the scope out. Because you will forget. Yes, I've done my sphincterotomy and that shit, zabardast, you know, stone be nikalaya, and you just completely forget and pull it back. No, 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 there is no harm, no, no, there is no harm. He, what he is talking about is comfort level and I agree with him because my, com my comfort is also when it's, when I can move things. Yes. So many, but that comfort has come over years. What people are saying for beginners, for beginners, yes, apps. Yeah, yeah. What you do initially, becomes your habit. So that's No, initially, initially ka masla hi hota hai ki like, you know, when you are, um, you lock. That's fine. <laughs> I won't argue with you, madam. Well, you see, if my screen is here, then I'll keep it here. Uh, and, and so, 
this is fine for me now. Why would I move? I would only move if I'm not getting something or if I'm trying to do something for which movement is necessary. Otherwise, once you've got it, what I tell my juniors is, position, please don't move now. Stop breathing. I think it's very important to have more than one screen. Okay, um, it's very useful. But I'll tell you, um, all my private cases, I only have one, one screen. And it's, no, in fact, not, that's not fair. I have two screens. So I usually look at the one that's in front. But sometimes when you when when you have when you're doing um, certain cases where your position is such that it's much more comfortable lo to look this side than you look. You have to remember, you're young people, and you have to look after your back and neck. I've destroyed mine too late. Us waqt kisi ne sikhaya bhi nahi tha, us zamane mein ye sab nahi hota tha. So, you know, ke hume to sirf ye sa karna hai, aur ab lage mein, oh, kisi ne samjhaya nahi ke table uchi kar lo, bhai, apne size ke saab se rakho. Thik hai na, to isi mein khush te, cannulation ho gai, spinkrotomy ho gai, whatever. So who wants to take over? I don't know. So who's hands on? Ajo. I'm the third. Who's number one? Ajo and Jovi number. So मुझे थोड़ी सी cheating करनी पड़ेगी आपके लिए. It's not bad yet. That's what I. I have never used Pentax, so you can please. I, I can tell you because I, where I was first, I had the on my Pentax, so when I moved here, job, so Pentax. Okay, have a feel. What you were saying, right? That's the difference. When you are rotating, so what is happening? So when you are doing clockwise, your, your ampulla is going away on the left side. They are doing anti-clockwise, coming this side. So this, this particular movement sometimes also helps you to the cannula or the stent in, and we'll sh in in humans, I'll show you that 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 uh, that not difficult at all to show you. Okay. Now let me see. This is a little bit position difficult, but you know, a little bit under, dalo beta. Okay. This is where what you were saying, how close I want my, I would be pretty happy with this position. Okay, um, even a little bit more straight if I can use the. So the big wheel, the small wheel is actually doing this. Okay, that's your. So you actually bring your. Now, if you want to lock it here, I have no problem. So you can lock it here, and you can lock this also. This is a pretty good position. Okay, and I'll keep my finger because that's that's where I want. Okay. जब आप कैनुला डालते हैं, तो you need to understand where is the pancreatic duct, where do you expect the CBD to be, and what do you want. Selective cannulation is not about you know achieving when you become very experienced. It's something that you should understand from the very beginning. Okay, so if you want to go into the ampule to the CBD, where do you think the CBD should be? Which which position on an ampule? Okay, right. And so for 11 o'clock, what do you have to do? Push in, make it at uh, 1 o'clock, make the ampule at 1 o'clock and go to something. So you just mentioned one thing before we proceed. We don't like, we don't like, don't we don't like the word pushing. pushing. Okay. What? <laughs> Why do we say pushing is not good? Perforate? Yes, but pushing yeah. means what? Pushing means you're actually advancing against resistance. Oh, right. right? And in endoscopy, if you are advancing right. and there is resistance, you stop. If you want to avoid perforation. Right. If it's not your friend or enemy, then please keep advancing. So um, 11 o'clock, pancreas is straight. Sometimes you still go straight 
but you're literally going at at this area okay that's this is where you're aiming not always uh, possible to exactly go there um, sometimes you can use the um, bow in your synchrotome to help you and we'll touch all on some of these things when we are actually doing the cases and um, there's a very nice presentation by Khalid on, on cannulation techniques so we'll talk about it but in the meantime you'll have some uh, idea of uh, of, uh, of cannulation so let's see when was the last time you cannulated Good. So this is not bad here. So in ERCP, it's very important to have some kind of communication and good understanding with your techs. You cannot do ERCPs without your techs support. Now, they may not be a tech, they may be um, a colleague, but you need somebody on the other end. If it's a good tech, then he or she will understand what you want and make life very easy. And if he or she is not well trained, then God bless you because it's going to be very tough. And always talk to them so they understand what you're doing because everything is about exchanges in ERCP. No matter what you're doing, if you're putting, if you're cannulating, you're putting wire in, and you're taking the cannula out, you need to understand what they need to understand what they have to do. They know exactly what I want. They know what Vakar wants. They'll guess what Dr. Mustafa wants. But they won't know what you want. So you need to make that understanding. Now, come, come back a little bit. Where do you want to go? This is very easy. This is open. But where would you want to go for CBD? Uh, at 11 o'clock. OK, so how do you go to 11 o'clock? Now you've got elevator, right? We haven't touched the elevator at all. That's the other thing that actually advances you can use elevator when you elevate it, you're actually advancing that in upwards and so the, the cannula will go in. Do you think you're in the pancreas or in the CVD? I think if you want to go, oh, if you want to go a little bit more towards 11 o'clock, what options do you have at the moment? Okay. What else? You can use the bow. So bow karotra. Okay. Once you've got this bow, and supposing you're in, now if you bring your big wheel, if you bring it towards you, what happens is, in in this this is what I was talking about. You can either advance, or you can bring your ampulla close to you. You have the cannula. Okay. You can either advance this like this or you can keep it still where you want and bring it close um, I'll ask these two but I'll tell you my practice um, majority of the cases the ampulla comes to me okay big wheel big wheel whatever pull back because it's once I'm in the right position I know where I am I just want to bring the ampulla like this and a little bit like this for CBD so your small wheel comes into play. Why dalo? Pancreas. You want to add anything, Dr. Yeah. Okay, so you're in the pancreas. Now this is something that's very good because no matter what you do, sometimes you will not be in the duct you want and no matter who it is in the world. Okay? So it's very important to check 
because you don't want to go into the pancreatic duct and think, oh, great, why is gone good, you know, and, and keep doing something or inject without realizing. Because if you're not sure, there is no harm in injecting in the pancreatic duct, but you should know you're injecting in the pancreatic duct. So if you're not sure, and this is what I do, I tell them, little dye, possible pancreas. So they will only inject a little bit. We look at the fluoro, and the moment we see it, I don't want the pancreatic duct. I've got the trajectory that I wanted, and that's enough. This is usually when you've done a, a couple of times. So it's important to tell your technician when I was saying you need to communicate. In, in, why talk? When you got out, you got पूरा पूरा पेरेंटाइमा भी उसका वो हो गया और सारा एंड देन यू से ओ शिट यू नो पैंक्रेटाइटिस हो गया पैंक्रेटाइटिस दिस इज प्योरली व्हेन आई सेड एक होता है कॉम्प्लिकेशन पार्ट ऑफ द प्रोसीजर यू वर कैनुलेटिंग एवरीथिंग वेंट बाय द बुक एंड पेशेंट हैड पैंक्रेटाइटिस आई कांट हेल्प इट बट टू फॉर ऑल पेशेंट्स ऑल कमर्स एवरीबॉडी नो I I now now my my reports will say first pass second pass third pass cannulation, so I write cannulation first pass no pancreatic duct cannulation will not do anything. No no हम नहीं routinely नहीं दे आप routinely देते हैं? Yeah so where where I where आप कैसे ट्रायल कर रहे हैं सर रैंडम आ गए टू ग्रुप वन इन प्लास्टिक ग्रुप एंड इन अदर वी आर यूजिंग 100 मिलीग्राम ब्लैक ओपन माय माय वरी इज दैट यू नो इफ यू आर डूइंग वेल यू डू 100 केसेस यू विल गेट 3 3 पैंक्रेटाइटिस आइडियली and a significant difference uh, is going to be also dependent on who's doing it how much time you're ca- taking to cannulate and s- a lot of details because I, i will not accept it i'm sure he will not i'll say bhai mujhe ye batao tumne kitni dafa sala pancreatic duct cannulate how much what was your cannulation time because that's directly proportional yeah, one of the one of the one of the factors is how much time you take So, hands, so, so I think there are a lot of variables in in acute pancreatitis following ERCP, but I mean giving Valtrol is 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 a pretty simple thing to do. Um, हमार हम हम तो not in all cases, but we that's what we do. Similarly, pancreatic stenting. Um, if I have done a, uh, it's been a difficult one, and we're getting into the pancreas. You know, more than three times, then I put a pancreatic and then go and do whatever I have to, or I will leave a wire in if it's a whatever I have to come back and put a put a stent in the pancreatic duct. Um, but not obviously, you don't need to do it in 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 every case. But I think there is a there, there might be a case of giving water in everybody. Water in there, me, no harm is done. What is very important is, I think, when you suspecting pancreatitis, uh, in our practice we push in fluids. The so moment we have that, that's very important. So I will, in, I'll tell my anesthetist, yeah, I'm not happy. Push in some fluids. Even though pancreatitis is worked out, so नहीं पता होता, but I, am, you know, you have an idea is not. Quite often, जब आप समझते हो नहीं होता, जब नहीं समझते हो जाता है. So come back again and 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 try again. Wire back, please. So I want you to talk to the um, the technician. Technician should understand your language. अगर आप कहते हैं wire in, he should know what wire in means. Wire in can be into the scope, or wire in can be inside. How does he know what do you mean? So you need to understand. हम तो लॉन्ग वायर शॉर्ट वायर लॉन्ग वायर जो भी देते यार हम हम लोग हम व्हाट इज यूजुअली लॉन्ग वायर या इट कम्स आउट टू बी विद द एक्सेसरीज एंड ऑल इट्स मच मोर इजीली अवेलेबल एंड मेक्स मेक्स नो डिफरेंस टू 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 वी हैव बीन वेरी यूज्ड टू इट बट 
but yeah, with, with, with the technicians that we have, we are, we are very blessed and we uh, And plus, um, like an uploga, it's, it's much easier to use short if you are using it. Okay, uh, one of the problems, and you'll go to a workshop and you'll see somebody else cannulating while you saw your boss struggling. We use cannulotomes as long as they can be used. Okay, as long as they can cut, we use them. We reuse accessories. We reuse. When you reuse accessories, you can see the cannulotome first time is different, second time may be the same. After that, it changes. So it makes it a little bit more difficult to cannulate because the uh, distal end of the uh, sphincterotome becomes a little not so smooth as it is when the first time you're doing it. So uh, similarly with the wires. So when you go to the workshops and you see the experts just doing everything, remember also there is an there is an additional advantage they have. Everything is new. If you, if you give me a new sphincterotome and a new wire, uh, you know, yeah, things are easy. So what have you done differently? I haven't seen anything differently. Now you are doing but you are doing the same things. So you, that's why you are getting into the pancreas. You have to do different things. So what I'll do is I'll do what Vakar is saying. I'll give you a better position. Pull back. Pull this thing up. Okay. Now bring yourself. Now go up. Go. No, no. Elevate your thing. You need to go. Elevate, 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 elevate. Thoda aur elevator se elevate kare. Aap to andar jane ke baat kare na. So that's not going to help you. So you need to elevate before you go in. Go, go, go in now. Now go in. Slowly go in. Ab elevate karo. And try the wire. Maybe you're lucky. I don't think you are. No, you're still in the pancreas. So you go in with the bow. Let me show you a couple of things. If you're trying to do this and you're getting into the pancreas, you see, you need to get your position a little better. Akram, bow karo. Bow, 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 bow. What's happening is we need to go here. And that's, that's what I did with my small wheel. And this is good because it's shown, you see, I, I needed to get in and get into the right position for going towards the uh, CBD. So what this tells you is that you have that option of using the small wheel as well, if you want to. I'm not sure if I'm in, but I'm just, this is, this is what I would do. Big bow karna beta? Akram bow? More, 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 more. Try wire. Is it? Sure. I don't see the wire. Okay, once you've got it, then you just gently follow this. And as you're now in this position, you can actually pull back and this will advance your cannula. Release the bow, please. Okay. And now advancing this into that system, it's a, it's a joint thing. He will pull back. Now, the communication here is non-verbal. He knows what I am going to do and he's doing what he's supposed to do without even asking. But that's because we do this for the last 20, almost 18 years, 19 years we've been together. Khalid ke saath mein gaya tha Florida. I was impressed by everything. I mean the unit, I mean, it's just beautiful. And everything is amazing. But vortex, I said, how can you tolerate this man here? He was bad. I mean, bad? He wouldn't be working here, man. I'm sorry. I mean, I was crazy. Because it's a difficult pancreatic task. And he got the damn wire out. In that exchange, so I thought you went out. Or out? This is difficult. I said, यार ये तो डॉक्टर साहब हम फंसे हुए हम क्या कर सकते हैं इसमें ज्यादा कुछ नहीं कर सकते जो है उसी को इस्तेमाल करना है 
apni akal bhi nahi thi yaar uski i swear with due respect but uh, other than that everything was great so we are actually through you got the wire in wire dalo okay now because we put in the extra wire ye aapka ho gaya this is not about what i was telling you is this is not about cannulating it's about understanding the different things you can do okay even in this dummy which honestly is not easy yeah, who's next जस्ट हाँ ओह वहाँ तो आप कुछ कह भी नहीं सकते यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट यू डू भाई ठीक है ना यू नीड टू नो वॉट द बिग व्हील डज यू नीड टू नो वॉट द स्मॉल व्हील डज दिस इज द डमी का फायदा आई कॉन्ट अलाउ यू टू डू दिस इन द्यूमन सो यू कैन एक्चुअली यूज द थिंग यू कैन प्रैक्टिस द स्मॉल व्हील इट गिव्स यू दिस नॉट एग्जैक्टली द सेम बट इट गिव्स यू एन आइडिया ऑफ वॉट इट इज लाइक इन ह्यूमन ओके that's an important thing he's mentioned you when you are inserting anything lock the elevator otherwise well it makes no difference what happens is you'll keep going in and you won't know so you lock the elevator and when it knocks you let the elevator go you know it will come out elevator up you'll see it before starting the procedure must make sure that your right left up and down and your elevator are functioning there is no point doing an ercp if any of those are not okay so then uh, i'll try to uh, so if you want to bring if you want to bring it facing towards you look you have got two options one option is doing this the other option is wapas isko jaane do the other option is this so you have two ways of actually bringing your ampulla right or left you can use the talk which is what he is doing or you can use the small wheel and these things you start understanding like you drive the car then you don't have to think you know idhar hai mujhe ye karna hai idhar chala gaya mujhe ye karna hai theek hai agar main ye karunga to it will come back right is going towards this left is coming bringing it here and uh, i think once you start understanding those yeah. movements then at least your position position of your ampulla is achieved and maintained okay. because there's no point achieving that and not maintaining it so now i will uh, try to aim it at level clock allow yeah. the assembly uh, please uh, go here yeah go full go full go okay. right okay. the okay. the elevator <laughs> uh i'll let me just bring in my elevator and but you see what's happening there right. it's actually yeah so so yeah. what are you going to do pull back a little bit and just elevate a uh, bow again akra bow now yeah good lucky you so so you understand now try and get into the pancreatic duct okay so for the pancreatic duct again bring the ampulla close to you ampulla okay i'll uh, what i'll do i'll take the ampulla to the back so for the ampulla and big wheel back so big wheel back good and uh, now i'll ask the ampulla i want it to be a little bit on the right of the screen on the right yeah so yeah good. Good. and i can also use a small wheel uh, yeah. so on the left of the uh, good so let's take the big wheel back next have a look and we bajen whatever you want to say jee yes yeah yeah the uh, obviously this is this is about right left use of right left wheel big wheel use use of this is all this is it makes no difference whether you can cannulate or not cannulate in this one makes no but 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 normally like dr sir was saying the ampullas can be different theek hai okay so then we come to techniques of cannulation so one technique is where you just go in with a sphincterotome or a cannulotome uh, 
in our practice since 1996, I have hardly, hardly used cannula for very difficult pancreatic duct cannulation if I have. But other than that, almost all, my first um, poster at BSG from Pakistan was in 1997 and that was uh, about uh, sphincterotome cannulation. So I don't use, we don't literally have cannula, I don't think we have cannulas. As, uh, just, just for pancreatic. So, um, we use cannula at home. I mean, nobody will object if you use a cannula, but uh, it saves time, it saves, it's less fluoro, it's less accessories, cost effective. So, for us, it works everywhere. And to me, it's easier to cannulate with the sphincterotome, especially most of the time you want bile duct. If you want pancreatic duct, then you can. I, and now, also for pancreatic duct, I use sphincterotome. I, I very rarely use it. Oh. So that's our practice. Um, this, if, if you've tried using the cannula or ampulla and you're not successful, what options do you have? Okay. You have one which is using a wire. Okay. And uh, we'll tell you how you use the wire in a second. You, that's wire guided just go up there. Jamil, I, I, what's up, what do you do? I do it with Yeah. Okay, the ampulla that's, in my practice, the ampulla that's winking at me, it worries me. So that's the, that's the bugger which I think, oh man, good. Unless it's actually squirting bile, that's different. But if it's just winking, a choti si opening hai which is telling you I'm waiting here for you, come in. It means it will not allow you to come in. That's where I take a wire straight. Now in my practice, if I have a wo tiny winking ampulla, I would go with a wire. Um, but I, like Doc Sub, I would go straight with the sphincterotome yeah, yeah. first. If I'm not able to get in, then I will. Sir, mujhe zara ampulla ko right pe le jai. Right, right, you're going on the left. Yeah, that's it, okay. And so, what options do you have of moving the ampulla uh, away? I'm going to try over here. Yeah. With my body movement. Yeah. And, and as so, well as so, I so your body movements are very important in ERCP. And what is body movement? Body movement is just talk. Yeah. You're actually talking without okay. realizing because most of the time your scope is like this. So when you move, you actually talk. And when you move like this, and that's important. I just told you why. And small wheel, again, you need to understand what it can do. Because you people lock your scope, okay? When you've locked it, you don't use it. And that's what Dr. Bakar was mentioning. Once you get more and more, more and more experience, you don't really need to lock. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. This okay? you and this is how you bring it close. So you know that you can bring it close with the scope coming out with the big wheel uh, up and big wheel down would take it away from you. And, uh, and of course, this talking also helps you sometimes advancing things. Quite often I just use that. One thing that we are ignoring over here is this is air. You already... Uh, air in, in duodenum? Yeah. You don't really need to put in a lot of air for uh, for most cases. That's what I'm Unless asking. you're, just, just when you're cannulating, uh, once you've got I everything here. Don't do, once yeah. I'm, I have to visit, I do not go for any more air. No, you don't so need to. Is, and there's a message yeah. being told that why is your finger off the air port? No, no, I don't that's that. because when you're doing your colon and gastro, that's what you're doing. So most of the time you're doing your gastros, right? Yeah. Most procedures most are gastros. So gastros may natural instinct aap ki hai ke you've got air. So wo instinct aap ki yaha a jati hai. Okay, isme ek cheez hum jo use karte hai, I mean, I'm sure they are different. Um, uh, for paralyzing the gut, now we use atropine. And we dilute it with uh, 9 cc. And so then we use one cc um, of that, so it becomes one in ten, uh, eight point one ml. So um, because buscopan is not available here, IV buscopan in Pakistan is not. It's ridiculous. Don't know why. Or, achha. but you use glucagon. Yeah, our glucagon is very expensive. Because the last time when I glucagon, I got it. I kept it so that it would expire.
firstly aap ko zarurat nahi ki aap paralyze kare in majority of the patients you really don't need to in our experience so we'll go and try and do it without but if it's moving too much then i would give atropine for course purpose we always keep glucagon because we know you know they're used to it but uh, we don't use it other i've never i've never used glucagon actually given the changes and uh, uh, either metoclopramide is added with them or ondansetron is coupled with it so that increases i've noted that it increases the gut mucus so we don't use ondansetron or we don't use uh, maxalone at all so we are trying we are First and foremost, I think is positioning your ampulla. Okay. So that's what we are practicing here and trying to explain to you methods and ways of actually better positioning your ampulla, moving it right, left, bringing it close, etc. Once you've got the position right, there is no reason why you can't cannula it. How long are you allowed to cannula it depends on how patient Dr. Vakar is, <laughs> or Dr. Saad is, or Dr. Mustafa is. <laughs> How, how patient is your boss and how much time we have? One of the important things is when you get your position right, it's most important to have a look and get it. Have it right. So what the full day you should take it, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, just to get the picture in your mind. You can't touch that at all. Or you can't sit that up with your friend up or your good friend up. Once you get that right, you can't touch that at all. So this is facing diagonally, right? So if you try and cannula it here, it won't happen. So if this is the position you get, which is right, I want it here, right? And this is the distance that I want, and I want it facing towards me. I can literally see the duct inside. And I, then I know I can use this to bring it close and far. And I can use this once I've got this position. And if it is moving, then I would lock it, but, but right position. Now I've got it right where I want, and I'm using my big wheel to bring it back and forward. So I think it's a very important point Vakar has made. It's very important to spend a few seconds, okay, and looking at the ampulla. After you position it, have a look. See where you want to cannulate, okay, and then go. Jo nija triplex hota na, aagya vandh, to dil jaye ya, kahin to jayega sala, andar ho jaye, aisa nahi ho, boss aage wapas le lega. Thik hai? Um, when I was, when I started my training, I had two kinds of bosses who trained. One was too cool. And the other would told me, I'll allow you one, one, only one go. Here's the scope. Jab mene position kar liya, he says, okay. One go in, otherwise leave the scope. So sometimes I'd look at the ampulla and say, take the scope. So why didn't you try? I said, there's no point. I know I won't get it one time. These ampullas are difficult ampullas and we are learning. But the advantage I had with the other one would leave him. Keep trying. I said, no, I can't. I don't want to risk. So the combination is so good. Once I started, the other one, the hawk was very, I used to hate him. But that guy actually gave me a little pressure. And then when they are given free time, so then you have. So you know, you, it depends on how much time your boss has, how busy your units are. Um, they, I know, in I don't know about your unit, but uh, in Florida, um, the list was um, one hour uh, for each case. So it started eight in the morning, and they would have one hour. So one list, one room, one suite would have from eight in the morning early cases. They would finish in ten minutes sometimes, but then the next case was not necessarily brought in immediately. So that you know. Mag recovery, etc., whatever. So the the good thing for the trainee was he had plenty of time um, to actually um, you know to do the procedure. And I have to say that uh, at least the uh, you know Khalid is an amazing teacher as well. Amongst the three, Khalid was the one who was very very patient. Um, so you need to have that spacing. For, for your trainer to allow you. That's why I said I don't have time for Zia. I am I'm accepting. 
I said, I have so many cases I, I can't do. So, and, and of course, they're difficult ones. So, we know they've failed by somebody else. There's no point allowing the trainee to go in. I will allow him maybe just to put it in the ampulla, just to position it for me, but not anything more. Okay, so it depends. So, um, time like that, but you, I mean, you know, I tell everybody, if I can do it, I can, I know everybody, everybody can do it, because I was, I'm not very good at, you know, so it's practice, it's being passionate, it's not stopping at a certain level, it's making sure that I saw somebody who's one of the best in the world, I want to be like him, why can't I be like him, what's so special about them, or anybody, so, but I want to stop, who cares, that's not acceptable. For what is the U.S. numbers now for a center to be allowed to do ERCP or a, or a consultant to do ERCP minimum in a year? Unfortunately, it's not there. No, it's not there. The trainer. No, I'm talking about the for, for a center to be accredited or a trainer, how many should he be doing a year minimum? There isn't a, a cutoff. In U UK, 250 a year for the center. Yeah. And for an individual? For individual, 105. 100, and 100 plus. Or they can cut it without doing it over 1200. So if you've got, if he's got 20, then at least 8 or 7 of them are not doing enough. Or some are doing more. If he's got 10, then they're all okay because. So, so if you're doing 1000 uh, and you have you know, 15 people doing it, then the numbers, you know, so. So I think it's important, the point we're making here is, we've learned, these technical procedures, the more you do it, the more you will be better. There is no good thing, it doesn't matter. Okay, are we done with all four? Done? No, not now. So, let's get started. So, what should be the ERTP success rate for an individual to be the independent ERTP? What should be a success rate uh, for, for an individual to be independent ERCPs according to, if I'm not wrong, US uh, may, it's, it's 150? If you've done independent? No, success rate over 90%. No, no, but when you're allowed to do independently, it's 150 the number? You've done 150? Three hundred competent UK tests, 300 actually. More numbers are 200. 200. So you should have done 200 or you should have done 300. But actually, in US, I don't think it, I don't think you monitoring the cannulation. You say that it doesn't The thing, yeah, I think it just add on it. Yeah. We will take it away. The moment any one of us feels that we are risking with your continuation, we are risking our patient's uh, health, we will take it away here. So if you feel bad, you feel bad. We don't care. But the, and that decision is purely the faculty who is standing with you. Whoever feels, if I feel, sorry, you are not making headway, I'll take it away. So please don't feel bad, but that's done for the patient, number one. Number two, you must remember that when you have actually played with the ampulla, the same ampulla that um, these two would have gotten with almost their eyes closed, now is a swollen, edematous, difficult ampulla. So every case we get, m not every, but some at least significant number of cases that we get after our juniors have actually played with the ampulla are actually difficult ERCPs, now for us. It may appear easy because of the experience people have, but it's actually the swollen edematous papilla that you don't like. Because you've actually pro prodded and you've, you know, tried and kept on trying. So um, I think before you mess it up for your boss, it's important for us and for you to realize, look, this is time I stop because I'm not making headway. 
and you'd know it straight. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll take a break here, have a cup of tea, and then after tea we'll talk about uh, cannulation methods. Abhi to humne sirf aapko positioning ka zada focus kiya, and then wire exchange. Wo ye do cheeze aapko we'll do that on the same thing. So we'll just exchange and 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 maybe you know after that we'll just put some stents and show you what to do. Okay. So we'll get about 15 minutes break. I don't. Oh shit.